Well, good evening and welcome to yet another episode of DXB Today. The perfect end, the perfect day in this perfect city. Thanks so much indeed for tuning in to Dubai One TV over the course of the next 60 minutes or so, giving a little of a heads up of some of the big events to look forward to, but also focusing on all things digital detox. Screen time can be a problem. Not this screen, this screen's fine. You can watch this screen as much as you like, the one you're watching at the moment. Uh, but the uh, big issue we have at the moment is screens left, right and centre. How much time do you spend glued to the screen? Is one of the questions we'll address tonight. Here's what's coming up on the show. Fetus heads down to the 12th edition of Comic-Con to celebrate pop culture and some of the celebrities who have flown down for the event. Ooh. Plus, we're breaking down digital detox and finding solutions to sanity with the experts. We've also got talented violinist right here in the studio with us, Pasha Kazan. So guys, screen time is always an issue. I always like keep track of it on my iPhone every week. Do you really? Like, you have one of those apps that like yes. limits you? No, it just tells you like, oh, you, you've been up 6% last, from last week. And I'm like, oh, oh really? Now I need to drop deal. my phone a little bit. No, because people have those apps now that limit you, that like log you off of Instagram or log you off on different apps so that you can't, you're like, you've reached your one hour maximum. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. If you guys are addicted to something tech wise, what would it be? For sure, it, me, it's my phone and Instagram. I think my phone, but I try to like limit myself from like using it as much. I like to go out and stuff. But Tom, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I try and avoid my phone as much as I can, as you probably know well. Um, however, what are the stats? I think the, the extraordinary stats at the moment are that on average, we touch our phone over 2000 times mm -hmm. a day on a daily basis. That gives you an indication of just how much of a sort of tool it's become for us. And it's become something of a sort of, it's almost a comfort blanket for many, isn't it? I always see this whenever you go into an elevator. If you get into the next time you go into an elevator, have a little look in the elevator. People around you will get nervous and just count before somebody reaches for their phone. They don't actually do anything with their phone, but they reach for their phone because it's that ability not to interact with somebody in a close environment, yeah. a close space. It's that sort of comfort zone, that comfort blanket to keep you away. I never thought it was about that, Tom. I always think that we're just so, we become so impatient. We're used to being distracted and entertained all the time. I'm like tying my shoelaces. We were just talking about this. The second I have a minute for you, I'm like what's happening in the world? I want to be entertained all the time. Yeah. I want to consume content. And it's mindless. Absolutely, I agree with that. And sure, it's comforting. It's like a comfort blanket. But I don't think it's because people are nervous to interact with each other. I think it's because people are bored. I do it, I do it. Because sometimes I just want to avoid awkward situations. Oh, see, so you're I'm on like, might as well, like, yeah, might as well just use my phone, so I don't want to like maybe interact. But that's the with argument. Someone. The argument is that is that people are losing the ability to interact face to face. They're losing the ability to interact socially because they get all the interaction yeah. they need from yeah. the screen. So that's when you're brought together in a close and fine space like that, where ordinarily you'd say, "Hello, how's your day been?" etc. That's all gone completely. Not that that really exists. Well, why would I want to talk to you in person when I can just see the highlights of your day on Instagram? <laughs> but not everyone is going to be posting everything. Low point, Instagram. low point. <laughs> low point. Um, well, you know, we have got so much to delve into today. My goodness, I think I have at least seven topics that I want to debate. And we've got the perfect guest co-host to debate them with. So let's find out who it is. Hello, hi, guys and girls. I'm M. Kwan, a UAE-based tech YouTuber and content creator. And I'm excited to be in the studios. See you in a few moments. M. Kwan will join us in just a little bit, but first, exploring the one of the most talked about events in the region. Faris went down to Comic-Con, the largest pop culture festival to meet cultural icons, and I was really jealous because of that. Uh, so let's take a look. So if you don't know, what is Comic-Con? Well, I'll tell you what, it is a convention. It's a party of people who love the same kind of thing. So some of the stuff you can enjoy here is some amazing stalls where you can buy some really cool stuff and merchandise. You can also get some fantastic art. And most importantly, you have a chance to meet, get autographs and pictures with your favorite celebrities from the pop culture world.
and I'm so excited right now to be with some of our celebrities here at the Comic-Con. I am here with none other than James and Oliver Phelps. Guys, thank you so much for being on DXB today. No, thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah thank you for having us. So, it's a short interview. I have so many questions. I'm such a big fan. I feel like Daniel Radcliffe. You guys are so tall. Amazing. But uh, first of all, we've got to ask, how has it been being in the UAE? Do you have any plans to do anything after the Comic-Con is over? Yeah, so um, we've actually asked to extend our stay while we're here because we were having such a great time. So we want to do as much as we can in the local area as well because we've been to, I've been to Dubai quite a few times and this is my first time to Abu Dhabi. So um, yeah, I'm hoping they're going to do a bit more, but I just love this part of the world. Everyone's so nice and welcoming. So it's yeah, great. From some of the other conventions you've been at, do you feel like there's a bit of a difference here with the fans that you meet at uh, Comic-Cons here in the UAE? I think so. I think it's, everyone seems to be very measured in a good way. Like, okay, we're going to, they, I mean, we've been very fortunate to have a lot of people coming to see us, but when they get to see us, they're all very, hi, how are you doing? And they've been telling us how far they've traveled from all over the region, really, not just from the UAE. So it's just been a great experience so far, and we're really enjoying our time while we're here. I mean, you have joined us through a lot of our childhoods. And I actually want to ask, because you went through the Harry Potter experience in your childhood, was there a difference from filming year one, the first film, to when it gets to seven, you were getting older, hormones, did it get, and the show got, and the films got more gritty. Did you feel that affect you in your personal lives? I don't know about the effect in the personal life because we were getting older at the same time. I still can't watch the Philosopher's Stone now because my voice is so high and everybody knows me as that. But being playing the character that we did, I was a very shy kid when we shot the first movie. But playing the outgoing guy, I became the outgoing guy in real life. So that was probably the major difference between first film one and film eight was that difference in me. I mean, it is amazing that you've done this entire career, this these this massive franchise with your sibling. Like, what was that like? Do you feel like it make it made it easier, or were you going through the same experiences together? Yeah, I'd say so. I, I think because that's the first thing we did, and it was together. So that that was like the normality, as it were. Um, but then, I suppose looking back, it, the, the weird bit came in the last film when I was doing a few days and James wasn't there. That that was a bit strange. Uh, but on the whole, it just added to the whole experience. So at Comic-Con, it's not just about the celebs, it's not just about the merch, it's also about locality, keeping things right here in the United Arab Emirates. And I'm here with Mike with Experience Abu Dhabi. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing here, Mike. Yeah, we're uh, launching uh, Hamdan, an Emirati comic book superhero. And we're gonna launch a comic book, a 48 page comic book soon. And uh, hopefully next year we'll venture into gaming, to animation and all that sort of. We're promoting this to the youth and of course to the Emirati people uh, to encourage them to produce more comic book super superheroes here in uh, Abu Dhabi. Mike, thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you very much, man. It's been incredible seeing so many people dressed up, so many people so enthusiastic about their favorite things, and I can't wait to enjoy more of it. I'm going to go have some fun, and you better make it down next year. I think it's fair to say Faris in his absolute element there at <laughs> yes. Comic-Con. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He is in his, yeah, that's his groove. Yeah, that's his groove. Uh, listen, uh, we're talking digital detox down here today, and our guest co-host uh, is a digital content creator combining the art of storytelling to uh, create the most, well, the next big thing, if you like, in technology uh, and lifestyle. Regarded as one amongst the, well, if not the top video uh, bloggers in the city at the moment, if not the region, he's collaborated with several international brands and publications. It's a warm welcome uh, to M. Quan. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, on the show today. What a pleasure and a privilege it is. Okay. And I'm loving that. So here we are having a digital detox uh, episode and we bring to the sofa the most prolific content creator in the region at the moment. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I've got to try my best to, you know, share the technology, but there's a lot of lessons I've learned and, uh, with that as well. And that's what I wanted to get to. I mean, have you, has there ever been, you know, given the fact that your life is screen based? Exactly. Have you got to a point where you've gone, hang on, Mquan, you need to take a step back here? That's happened to me on more than one occasion. Uh, and uh, it's definitely an experience with, I think, this territory, especially if you're dealing a lot with technology, with screens, like you said. Um, you have to self-regulate, and then there might be other people around you. My wife's probably watching this now, who's helped me to regulate that as well, so that experience. But technology, I think, generally has been really good. I think the last time I was here was in May yes. last year. So since that point, there's been absolutely incredible 
new devices, new applications, new sort of software as well. So there are a lot of positives, but I think there are, you know, some areas that we need to perhaps discuss mm. individually, but also as a community as well about our use of technology as well. I mean, you're a father, I so am. I know you have experience of this. I'm a mom of two boys who are very excited by their switches and gaming and technology, and I want them to be tech savvy. I don't want to hide them from that world. It is the future. I want them to be educated. I want them to be responsible about it. How do you strike that balance? Because I feel like it's been very hard to strike that balance. Well, I have a six-year-old and a nine-year-old, and I'm already dealing with some of those issues coming head to head. Um, I think for me, it's really about two things. One, and this is applicable for adults as well, we have to self-regulate, we have to be disciplined in that, uh, in terms of understanding what we're using our devices for. At the end of the day, technology is a tool, and we might use that tool to entertain, we might use that tool to get work done in terms of productivity. So I think it's about being self-regulated and then being aware of what we're doing at home, especially around younger children, that's gonna have an impact on them. So just being a bit more mindful about what you're doing at that moment in time. It's so easy, you know, to just go for the phone as you were talking about earlier on. It cuts out a lot of the awkwardness. Mm. Yeah. But sometimes there's that barrier between, you know, an awkward situation or avoiding an awkward situation and something that becomes almost like second nature, mm -hmm. which is what unfortunately we're finding nowadays. Mm. Absolutely you know, second yeah. nature. Yeah, Ooh, you touched helpful. base on some of the tech that a lot has happened since you were on the show back in May. Can you please tell us more about the technologies and uh, the things that so, came yeah. up? So I think in May last year, there were murmurs about AI, Yes. for example. AI now, um, a recent phone that I reviewed uh, was the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, mm -hmm. where now a lot of those concepts of AI have now moved on to a commercial device. Yes. And some of the things that you can do with that are incredible. I'd encourage viewers to check out the YouTube channel because I've got some reviews there that practically show you can be on a call with someone and you might not talk the language, but it's happening in real time using AI. Where translating. Translating it in real time mm. on both ends, wow. which is incredible. And that's from a commercial device that you can buy now. Um, for example, you've taken a photo and you know you might not like the friend that you're standing next to, you can AI them out, wow. place it with someone else. That's now you know possible with that. And then there's new technology, which I'm sure we've all seen, the new Apple Vision Pro, yes. which isn't yet available in our region, but you know I think that's going to be transformative when it, once it comes. Mm. Yeah. Quick one. Let's get the serious stuff out of the way, shall we? Because <laughs> then we can have fun throughout the rest of the show as well. But I know this is a topic that you and I have discussed in the past. And we've spoken a lot here in this little forum about um, our own personal responsibility or those around us, the loved ones around us, whether it be a child, whether it be a partner, etc., and jumping in. And yet it strikes me that, you know, at the core of this is, is, is the big tech companies Absolutely. and the algorithms they're building. I mean, yeah. what they're trying to do is they want more eyeballs, they want more touches, they want more likes as well. So when do they start to bear more responsibility? I think... Uh, Has that gone to court already? I think... <laughs> I mean, if you look at what's happening recently, um, there, there are two parts. One is the social media platforms, which is where a lot of people are spending majority of their time mm -hmm. when it comes to tech use. Some of those companies are now being, um, let's say it's, it's getting a, a little harder for them mm -hmm. in terms of they are required to answer for some of the features within the applications that they have. I think the next layer above that is the tech manufacturers themselves. Mm -hmm. But I think they've jumped the gun there slightly because if you look at what Apple have done, for example, there's a feature that's available on any iPhone now, which is running uh, iOS, which is um, a focus, for example. Mm -hmm. So you can turn off certain features, you can turn off certain notifications, that makes it a lot more easier. Mm. Um, Android application um, manufacturers are also doing something similar. So I think now that sort of, you know, uh, that sort of drive from consumers mm. is impacting uh, companies now to make those changes. What do you do for your personal sanity? Like, what, what, what rules do you have for yourself? So, I mean, like, for me, I've had the situation at home. Um, one second. So, so, for me, I've had uh, a situation at home now where I try and have strict time when I use my technology. Yeah. Um, particularly when the children come back from school, I will have a couple of hours where I try and avoid technology as much as I can. Um, that way, you know, I can spend time with the children. I, I can also hopefully get them to see that there are 
points and times where you don't need to be on the phone constantly. Um, one of the big changes that we've made in our house is that we don't sleep with the phone in the same room now. Oh, wow. Uh, and that I think that's good. massive. That's Whoa. Massive. I don't <laughs> think massive. I could commit to that. I think it, to begin with, just start charging your phone on the other side of the room uh, okay. to begin with. On the wife's side. Uh, well, <laughs> further than <laughs> Let further her get everything over there on that side. No, further than that, because I think that will completely change the sleeping experience, number one. I've noticed that. I mean, I, I don't know if there's evidence to support this, but at least for me, anecdotally, my sleep is better, generally. Mm -hmm. um, I get a time now where I can wind down before sleep. And it's just easier because if I get up or if anybody else gets up in the middle of the night, the first thing you do is what? You go for your phone yeah. <laughs> and you scroll. And True. if you're scrolling on something like TikTok and Instagram, goodbye. You go for hours exactly. just sitting there like on and just on. Going through that. So, you know, I think um, those are some of the things that you've got to yourself. Uh, you've got a traditional alarm clock. Uh, no, I actually just wake up uh, around about the same time. So I'm lucky in that sense that my eye opens at about the time that I need to Natural get up. Alarm. If I'm catching a flight or something, then yes. I might have the alarm on the other side of the room and that makes it easier to jump out of bed, but yeah. But I use my phone for everything. I'm checking the time on it. I remember things that I have to do, so I set the reminders. And you were talking about checking Instagram or TikTok or whatever when you wake up and go to sleep. I check it in the middle of the night when I'm like on going to the bathroom. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we have so much more to talk about. You're going to stay right there. You. You're an Thank awesome you. guest co-host. We're very happy to hear, uh, hear more from you. But for now, we've got a break and coming up, we are discussing digital addiction awareness and setting the right boundaries with a psychologist. So stay right there because we'll be right back.